bullying is on our minds and in our hearts because it's on the news and it's in our lives. We hear about it, we know about it, we witness it, we experience it, and we inflict it on others. In some way or another, we're all affected by bullying. So we have the responsibility to take it seriously. It's destroying lives, and it's got to stop. In my experience, the best weapon and the best defense against anything is understanding. So, with understanding as our common goal here today, together, you and me, let's take a good, thorough look at bullying and not conceal or understate any of the ugly things that must be told. I'll begin with my own scattered observations, after which we can spend time talking together. So bullying is appalling. The end of our time here today, you'll recognize the ferocity with which I use the word. Bullying is appalling. In schools, it's always the little ones that get it, or the ones who look unusual, or the ones who reach puberty first, or last, or the ones with zits, or the ones with different hygiene standards, or different anything else. These are the ones that get it bad, and that has always pissed me off. These are the ones who could use a little extra help, not a little extra hurt. Whenever I've seen bullying, it has appalled me. And when I'm appalled, I butt in for better or worse. But you know what? When it comes to bullying, butting in goes a long way. We'll talk more about that later. But for now, let's take a step back and look at this whole thing as observers. Together, you and me. You can draw on whatever experience you have. It's all part of the same equation. <laughs> Maybe you've witnessed bullying, maybe you've been bullied, maybe you've bullied someone else. Think back honestly to your school days. I don't think any of us was always kind. Except maybe my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and bullying is not unique to youth. This kind of behavior easily carries on into adulthood. Think of office politics, for example. The bully might even grow up to be your boss. It's an effective quality in a leader. Or you could be bullied by a friend, or by a sibling, or by a parent, or by your child. Anybody can bully. And to some extent, everybody has. There's more than one form of bullying. We're all familiar with physical bullying, particularly common among boys, which is the taking of power by rendering another person powerless. Either indirectly through physical intimidation, which by the way is the French word for bullying, intimidation, or directly physical incapacitation, literally beating someone up. And there's another form of bullying, increasingly common among girls, with words instead of punches, looks even, and psychological rather than physical domination. These are the ways that we bully. And it's important 
to recognize that these behaviors are common to us all as human beings. It's only the intensity of it that makes a bully. When it comes to the desire to physically or psychologically dominate another, and when it comes to the experience of being physically or psychologically dominated by another, you're all on common ground if you ask me. Perpetrators and victims, all of us. If I'm to understand what makes a bully and what makes a victim, I must first recognize the bully and the victim in me. We can't afford to look at this problem as conceptually foreign, the nameless, faceless bully with a capital B, when the roots of oppression run deep in us all. So let's dig it all out. I'm not so much interested in treating the symptoms of bullying. I'm interested in the cure. It's the difference between picking a weed and uprooting it. So what is this equation? What factors come together to produce this vicious, predatory behavior? And why do the prey submit to it? And why is the problem getting worse, not better? We have to ask ourselves these questions. They directly affect our well-being. If I want quality of life, for me and everyone else, I have to take these questions seriously. The same goes for you. So let's look first at the bully. You can recall one from your life, no doubt. And remember, take a look also at the bully in you. I assure you it's there. I didn't have to look far to find it in myself. In uh, high school, one of my classmates accidentally spilled liquid paper all over my Bible, which was my most precious possession at the time. And I was angry. And I treated her more unkindly and more unforgivingly than I felt. I knew it at the time, and I know it still that I did this just because she was on the nerdier side of things. How dare she, of all people, abuse me in this way? In those few minutes, I genuinely looked down at her worst punishment I could think to dish out. That was the bully in me. Shortly afterwards, I apologized for the whole thing, of course. I can't bear the weight of my conscience. Thankfully, she forgave me. This is all peanuts, I know, compared to what Big B bullying looks like. In fact, I did it just because. Just because she was below me in the hell of high school hierarchy, I treated her worse than I would have treated someone cooler who didn't give a crap about my good opinion, or my Bible, for that matter. The ingredients were there. My sense of superiority. Her sense of inferiority dash of anger birthed the bully in me. A bully preys on inferiority. And I want to make it very clear here that when I use the words inferiority and superiority, I speak only of perception. Okay? The perception of inferiority. The perception of superiority. I don't for a minute believe that anybody is inferior to anybody, or that anybody is superior. I speak only of perception. Okay? 
bully preys on inferiority. You don't attack someone you think you can't beat. The very act of bullying is a show, a demonstration of my superiority over you. The flexing of whatever physical or mental muscles that I possess are more powerful than yours. And that's all it is, flexing. There's no actual point. Nothing purposeful whatsoever is achieved by the act of bullying. So bullying is a showing off, a demonstration of my superiority over you. Why do we show off? Why is competitiveness to look better than somebody else? need to understand this if we are to understand bullying. Probably, as animals, biological organisms, hierarchy is built into our genes. The survival of the fittest and the instinct to eliminate threat by establishing dominance. In this sense, Bully is not unlike an alpha hyena. But psychologically, as thinking beings who generally consider ourselves to have evolved beyond the hyena and beyond the instinct to divide weak from strong, <coughs> why do we compete? Why do we show off, puff ourselves up? What's our excuse? When I show off, aren't I just saying, please think I'm good at this? Please think I'm strong? Please think I'm smart? Please think I'm cool? That's what I think. And where does that desire for approval come from? Obviously, from a sense of inadequacy, inferiority. If you think I'm good, then I must be. If you think I'm strong, then I must be. If you think I'm smart, then I must be. If you think I'm cool, then I must be. All of this comes from the same place. A fear that I'm not good. A fear that I'm not strong. Fear that I'm not smart. Fear that I'm not cool. Fear, fear, fear. Fear is revealed in the act of bullying. The worst bully is the most afraid, the lowest sense of self. Have you ever seen a dog attack someone? must have seen the fear there. Not just the fear in the person being attacked, but the fear in the dog. The dog that attacks you is a dog that's afraid of you. The worst behavior comes from animals, including humans, who are afraid. And the silly or the tragic thing about it is that usually bully is actually strong or smart or cool. And always, in my experience, the bully is even deep down truly good, as we all The whole problem of the bully is that the bully doesn't believe it. That's what's so silly, so tragic. This is a problem of self-sabotage. If the bully had a whole and healthy, accurate, and unmeddled with sense of self worth, then there would be no problem. Somewhere along the line, through whatever unfortunate circumstances, the bully has been made to 
feel afraid, or weak, or powerless, or stupid, or whatever other insecurity emerges from a distorted perception of myself. These common insecurities become the inflated weapons that the bully uses to clobber others with, for flexing purposes. You're weak. You're a freak. You're a freak. shows off strength, feels weak, and my bullying proves it. Violence, whether physical or psychological, is an act of powerlessness. It reveals that I can think of no better way to get what I want. It's the crudest form of action, and ultimately, weakest form of influence. Hitler brought millions to war by violence and had the trust of no one. Gandhi brought millions to peace by fasting and had the hearts of every one. Who was more powerful? Power through fear versus power through love. There is no comparison. So those who choose fear as the source of their power are those who feel most powerless to accomplish it any other way. Bullies are the weakest among us. And as I said, the silly the tragic thing is that the bully is not so powerless. A bully could use his strength or her intelligence to protect instead of destroy, for example. Or to inspire instead of devastate. This can change in an instant. The only thing stopping you is you. Look at me. Bald baby girl becomes bald bitter man. <laughs> that took change and the recognition that I am radically free. I am the author of my life. And I'm determined to make the story a good one, no matter what I've got to work with. So if you're a bull, or anyone caught up in an unhappy existence. Maybe you think that you go so far along the road, you can't really turn around. This is who people think I am. This is how I act. This is what I do. I can't just change. Well, boom. Change. Turn. Spin on that dime if you want. You are radically free. And don't you forget it. Whatever turn you have to make to make life better for you and everyone else, do it. There are many ways to gain respect and admiration and influence Bullying has to be the laziest, shallowest, most despicable means to that end. Using bullying to get respect is like using rape to get sexual intimacy. The comparison is not so far-fetched. Physical and psychological domination hardly a stone's throw from sexual domination. A comparison could also easily be made to drugs. In fact, you could almost say that bullying is a drug. When I bully someone, I get a quick fix of feeling stronger, cooler. 
It's artificial, but it feels like the real thing. And then the instinct kicks in to keep getting that fix, to remain under that influence, the habit forms, and there you have your bully. Person addicted to belittling others. There are single acts of violence and cruelty all the time. You're a particularly cruel species. But it's the habit, the repetition, the continuance and intention of torture that makes a big B bully. It's a form of addiction, an habitual escape from what's really going on in myself, which is that I feel weak, I feel afraid, I feel powerless, I hate myself, I hate my life. And of course, as with the drug, the bully is unaware of how transparent, that kind of under-the-influence behavior looks to everyone else. That guy's got issues. That girl's messed up. The bully wears a badge of fear and insecurity. I want to say to the bully, be smarter than that. Don't be so quick to reveal your powerlessness. It's like Mark Twain said, better to remain silent, to be thought a fool, to open your mouth and remove all doubt. <laughs> it's true of words, and it's equally true of actions. Silence is easily confused with wisdom. <laughs> Whatever stupidity was on the tip of your tongue. And inaction can look a lot strength, composure, confidence, whatever storm may be raging inside. I might feel weak, afraid, insecure, even violently angry, but unless I go around stomping on people, no one would know it. Think about what your words and actions reveal about you. Goodness sake, don't be so quick to reveal your weakness and fear. And anyway, so it, if you feel weak, afraid, powerless, stupid, ugly, mediocre, or whatever other insecurities plague us all, we all say the same mean things to ourselves. We're all idiots for it, as far as I'm concerned. Because I have never known a person who did not have a good, beautiful, powerful heart buried beneath all the crap. So if someone's acting like a bully, I want to know why. Why in the world would you sell yourself social? What lies are you telling yourself, and why? And how much poop are you going to make me shovel before you reveal the good but hurting heart underneath? Darn it! Be good to yourself and everyone else. It's easy if you try. Now, let's take a look at the victim of bullying. I have known victims of bullying, and I am painfully conscious of the pain of many here whose lives have been shattered by bullying and a crippled sense of self worth. I have my compassion. I myself have never been.
being, they could be bullied. But I have known what it feels like to be belittled and psychologically dominated. I know what powerlessness feels like at the hands of somebody who takes control away from you with the intent of causing you harm. Whatever the degree, that's bullying in my book. To some extent or another, I suspect that we have all been victims. What makes a victim? What makes it possible for me to be abused in this way? And I want to make it very clear here that these questions in no way suggest that the victim is to blame for anything. Blame goes to the bully to whoever chooses to do violence. But looking objectively, observing at the victim as a piece of this puzzle, a necessary part of the equation, what makes a victim? We've looked at the bully and seen that fear and insecurity, a low sense of self, are the cause. I hope we've all seen this. A person who is confident and self-assured doesn't go around stomping on people. That's just not how it works. So fear and insecurity make a bully. And what makes a victim? Guess what? Same thing. Fear and insecurity. In some cases, there is fear of physical harm. I don't want you to punch, so I submit. I don't resist you because I fear you for obvious reasons. In other cases, there is fear of psychological harm. The fear that the bully will identify my weakness my insecurity, and exploit it. You think you're ugly? I'll make sure you and everyone else knows it. You think you're fat? Bet you wouldn't want that pointed out all the time. God, what's with those clothes? What the frick is wrong with you? Etc. You can be targeted for your looks, your shape, your personality, your mannerisms, your clothes, it isn't any specific quality that attracts the bully. I should know. I've worn some of the worst clothes in history. I totally got away with it. The bully is attracted to insecurity. Remember, don't attack someone you think you can't beat. So the bully is always sniffing out an advantage over somebody else to exploit. If I am afraid of anything, my fear can be manipulated. It can be used to control. I know this. I have experienced it. This is a fact. And that's the bully's power. The manipulation of fear. The exploitation of fear. The control of others through fear. If you fear Others getting to know the real you, for example. Like a gay kid putting on a straight act. Or a Trekkie trying to look cool. <laughs> the bully sees right through that. Sniffs out the insecurity and takes the bait in a heartbeat. Having insecurity around bullies is like Superman having kryptonite to his enemies. Take my butt, for example. Growing up, a girl at the time, if you've forgotten, I had a great big bubble butt, which I hated with a passion. And I dreaded anyone teasing me about it. And it didn't help that I wore my gym shorts under my school skirt for practical purposes. I'm a practical person. Which made my butt even broader and bubblier. And sure enough, one day, a group of kids got to teasing me about it. Hey, you've got a big butt. And other witty remarks. 
<laughs> I was mortified. Wanted to crawl into a hole, but first and die. <laughs> but a revelation came to me. If I don't look humiliated, they won't know that I feel humiliated. They only know what I show them. So, I showed them instead, smiled, and said, well, isn't it a good thing these days for a girl to have a big butt? Well, they pondered that observation and agreed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, people like big butts, and I cannot lie. <laughs> I never heard a word about it again. And it taught me a valuable lesson in the vulnerability of insecurity power of confidence. There are many treatments for bullying, but the cure is right there. Without fear, without insecurity, no one can be bullied. A person can be beat up, sure, or killed. A person can be teased. We all get our fair share and more. A person without fear, without insecurity, cannot be big, be bullied. There's nothing to exploit. The bully is powerless. Like Gandhi said, that frail little man, he said, you can't hurt me without my permission. And when he said something, he meant it. Think about it. If your psychological security is utterly independent, if your sense of self is whole and healthy, unmeddled with, if your sense of worth is totally self contained, then your happiness and your well being. No one but you. This is radical freedom. You can't hurt me without my permission. So pardon my language, but screw fear, screw insecurity, love yourself. So what if you're fat? short or tall, so what if you're stupid or genius or ordinary, so what if you're queer, so what if you're scrawny, so what if you're a transsexual, so what if you have a big butt, who cares? <laughs> Experiment with loving yourself, I dare you. Same goes for both. devastate their victims. If 
yours clever than prove it. Genuine, crippling, the already frail, proves nothing but cruelty and stupidity. What is intelligence for, anyway, if not for problem solving? As organisms, that's why it's there. That's its function identify problems, potential, and real, and to find solutions. So again, this form of bullying is a perversion. It uses intelligence to create problems where there would otherwise be none. This is unnatural, cruel, and stupid. The opposite of intelligent. So if you're bullying, then stop it. You can do better than that. And if you're being bullied, then take control. Take your control back. Tell your parents. Tell your teachers. Tell the janitor. Tell the reporter. Tell the police. Don't hesitate for a moment to shout it from the rooftops. Be a tactic. There are worse things, like continuing to be bullied. Tell. Talk, find your voice, and then use it. You do not deserve to be treated like dirt. And anyone who tells you otherwise lies. You deserve dignity, love, nurture. You are good and precious. Don't you forget it for a moment, not even with your head dunked in a toilet. Don't let anyone break through. Don't let anyone sabotage your self-worth. You are as powerful or as powerless as you think you are. Gandhi was beaten up more times than most people in this world. But it took assassination to render him powerless. As long as he had breath, he used it powerfully. Even ground down in the dirt, he was powerful. If you think that you're powerless, then you are. And by the same mechanism, if you think you're powerful, even if you aren't, you are. Believing makes it so. I know. I'm doing it right now. So screw fear. Screw insecurity. Love yourself and live confidently. It's like Orson Scott Cards. Perhaps it's impossible to wear an identity without becoming what you pretend to be. I think about this all the time. That's why I'm up here right now pretending to know what I'm talking about. Think about what you're pretending to be. If pretending leads to becoming, you'd be wise to pretend wisely. Are you pretending to be a bully, a tough guy, a cool girl, or whatever? Is that all you want to become? I'd rather pretend to be loving, compassionate, intelligent, and then see what becomes of me. Bottom line, bullies and victims and everyone else do whatever work it takes up here to accept, respect, and love yourself. After all, why not? It can only make life better. Experiment with loving yourself. See for yourself that a strong sense of self is as good as a bulletproof vest when it comes to abuse. So we've looked at the bully. Hopefully 
they recognized the fear and insecurity at the root of them. We've looked at the victim of bullying and hopefully recognized the fear and insecurity at the root there. And if we're finally, if we're to look at every piece of this whole puzzle, there is a third party involved in the equation of bullying, without which there would be very little bullying indeed. And that's whoever witnesses it, sees it, hears about it, before, during, or after. The audience. Since bullying is primarily a show of strength or superiority, it is essential to the equation that there be some form of witness. Not every single act of bullying is public. Often things are done that only the bully and the victim will ever know about. Or perhaps the witness is simply someone the bully brags to afterwards. But a bully that acts only in secret, in my mind, would just be insane. Purely sadistic step away from serial killer, which I think would be the natural evolution of that kind of violent, secret life. Now, bullying, by its very nature, is a show, an act. And a show without an audience isn't a show. An act without an audience isn't an act. You show off for someone. This could be a friend, a classmate, a stranger, anybody online, it could be a single person or a crowd of a hundred, I don't think it matters. Unless a bully is purely, secretively sadistic, there are three parties involved in the equation of bullying. The bully, the victim, and the witness. You, the witness, are the most powerful of the three. It's obvious why you may be more powerful than the victim, who likely feels powerless, and who may in fact be rendered physically powerless. But you're also more powerful than the bully, because the bully wants something from you. Your submission, your admiration, your fear, your laughter, whatever. If you're my friend, I want you to think I'm cool. If you're my enemy, I want you to fear me. I want to look strong. I want to look smart. I want to look powerful. I bully because I want. That's the bully's weakness. When I want something from you, you are in a position of power. You have power over the bully. The power to grant or deny what the bully wants. So exercise that power. Because either way, whatever you do, you play a role. Do you think, as a witness to bullying, that you're not involved? think that standing by and watching someone get beat up leaves you innocent of the crime? Or laugh when someone gets teased? Is that innocent? It is perhaps the worst form of guilt. You are present. You are physically and mentally able. You are conscious and unaffected by the passion that blinds the bully and the suffering that paralyzes the victim. Why were you not appalled? And if you were, why did that not move you to do something about it? Refuse to give your respect, your submission, your admiration, your fear, your laughter, and see how quickly that can deflate a bully. Be appalled. 
find your voice and then use it. Every single one of us has the power to stop bullying. The bully can stop it, obviously, by not doing it. The victim can stop it by being psychologically immune to its devastating effects, which isn't easy, but it is possible. And the witness can stop it, no matter who you are. I remember one day in elementary school, the two biggest guys in my class got into a violent fight. I never knew what the whole thing was about. It just shocked me and appalled me. And as I've said, when I'm appalled, I tend to react by sticking my nose in, which I did, literally. And it got punched hard. I don't know what else I was expecting when I stepped between them. <laughs> the best position maybe to show them my appalled expression. <laughs> it may not have been the cleverest thing in the world to do, but it worked. It stopped right there, and you can bet it never happened again, especially considering that a teacher arrived just in time to see what amounted to a big guy punching a girl. <laughs> And by an odd twist of events, one of the fighting guys, I don't remember if it was the one that punched me or not, ended up with a crush on me for years after. <laughs> However much I wasn't interested. <laughs> Poor guy. The event had a strange and lasting impression on me. So you see, it's clear. I know from my own experience that it isn't violence, but the intolerance of violence that inspires respect, admiration, even submission, whether you want it or not. So all the things that the bully wants, ironically, are gained by doing exactly the opposite of bullying. That's one of the reasons that bullying bugs me so much. It's not only bad, it's stupid. It's the opposite of intelligent behavior. It's the means to the opposite of the end that I want. So come on, let's all be sensible. If you're bullying, then stop it. Become someone's boss instead, or a politician. <laughs> and if you're being bullied, then take control. And if you can't, Take control of your circumstances, then take control of your ability to be independently well, which is even better and longer lasting. And if you're a witness to bullying, then intervene. I'm proof that even the dumbest idea is enough to put an end to cruel, senseless behavior. Interrupt. Throw a stick in that wheel. Do whatever it takes to destabilize the equation of strong xing weak equals power. It doesn't take much. But most witnesses don't intervene. Otherwise, there would be very little bullying indeed. No one would get away with it and there would be no reward, nothing to tempt habitual cruelty. So the problem isn't that witnesses can't stop bullying, it's that they don't. Why don't they? Guess what? Same reason, fear. Always fear. If I stick my neck out, it might be my head dunked in that toilet. Who's kidding who? But it's more than that. I know, because whenever I have witnessed cruel, senseless behavior, I don't have time.
time to think logically enough to fear. When I'm appalled, I butt in. I can't help myself. It's a reflex. Act now, regret later. <laughs> what does it take to witness cruelty and suffering and to remain unmoved by it? Why the apathy? Your problem isn't my problem. And in fact, if I get a laugh out of your problem, all the better. Disgusting. Apathy, indifference to others, is perhaps the worst and most common crime. It has enabled everything from bullying to slavery to the holocaust of Jews, to the holocaust of animals. None of this is possible without apathy infecting the majority of a population. Apathy makes a partner in crime. And this is especially tragic since I repeat, the witness is the one with the most power when it comes to putting an end cruel, senseless behavior. See what happens to a crowd of observers when one steps out and objects. Or if you don't have the advantage of numbers, if you're the only witness. See what happens to a bully when you have no reaction to offer, no respect, no submission, no fear, no laughter, no reaction other than a boldness. Every one of us plays a role in the phenomenon of bullying. Every one of us has a role to play in stopping it. So if you're just tuning in now, here's my conclusion. Screw up. Screw fear. Screw insecurity. Be a poet, but in, love yourself, love others, live confidently, think sensibly, be independently well, and be good, for goodness sake.